The History of Iron Man Figures, a case study for Action Figure Resource. Action. Figures. Resource. ActionFiguresResource.com Iron Man, like so many other Marvel superheroes, was created in the early 1960s Silver Age by Stan Lee, along with Larry Lieber, Don Heck and Jack Kirby. Every incarnation, aside from the Ultimate version, has had points of constant similarity. He's always been Tony Stark, an irresponsible weapons dealer who has his outlook on life changed by injury and imprisonment. He's always developed the armor himself, and being a futurist, he always seeks to improve it. Tony Stark makes you feel he's a cool exec with a heart of steel. And Iron Man all jets ablaze. He's fighting and smite with repulsor rays. Amazing armor. Yes, Iron Man. A blazing bomber. Yes, the 60s was not the best time for licensed action figures, so it wasn't until 1975 when the first Mego Iron Man emerged in their world's greatest superhero line. Clad in a one-piece jumpsuit and with a smiling helmet, he became something of a favourite with Mego fans. After the boxed editions, this figure was only released in one carded version, making him incredibly hard to find mint on card today, selling for thousands of dollars and thus highly prized by collectors. And you can hear more about Mego in our dedicated history video. Despite some awkward PVC figurines in the early 80s, his next major plastic incarnation was Mattel's Secret Wars line in 1984, and then Toy Biz's Marvel Super Heroes line in 1990. In 1995, again from Toy Biz, the first dedicated Iron Man figure line was released. This coincided with the cartoon and featured many of the same characters and likenesses. These figures had chunky snap-on armour accessories and for the first time highlighted the many specialised suits that Stark designed over the years. This lent the toys an aspect of being constructed and galvanised rather than simply existing as one complete figure, an aspect rarely revisited afterwards. This series was also notable for the first War Machine figure. The Toy Biz Iron Man line lasted four series with a planned fifth. It was cancelled after too many figures sat warming pegs possibly because there were too many suits of armour and not enough truly memorable villains and support characters. They also had only limited interest from adult collectors in being connected with such a twee and patchy cartoon and eschewing established classic comic armour styles for more outlandish and to coin an insidious phrase, toyetic designs. This basically meant their market was a fictional and undiscerning child who simply wanted everything Iron Man. Lines get cancelled when that mode of thinking is employed. In 1997, Toy Biz again released a very short-lived Avengers line to coincide with the awful United They Stand cartoon, which itself failed due to the non-presence of Captain America, Thor, and ironically, Iron Man. For this Iron Man, they adopted the style of the recent Jim Lee, Heroes Reborn, However, that comic series was also short-lived and unpopular, and this was a stage when Marvel were in trouble. We have a Toy Biz history video that you should definitely watch for more info on that. A second edition with a redesigned sculpt was planned for 2000, but never released as the TV show folded. In 1998, a famous covers figure was released. These paid homage to the original Migos with a more contemporary construction and sculpts. This is definitely a figure Mego fans should track down. Consider it an HD remake. In 1999, an early Iron Man, as he appeared in his first Avengers comic debut, was released as part of a set. And then in 2002, Marvel Legends emerged, and one of this beloved line's superstars was Iron Man. Stark and his companion James Rhodes received no less than seven standard figures. Classic, Silver Centurion, Modern, War Machine, Hulkbuster, First Appearance and Thorbuster. Two variants included the classic Stealth and Gold First Appearance, a supersized Icons version, a two-pack versus the Mandarin with a War Machine variant, and one from the House of M gift set. This was until Hasbro took over Marvel Legends and released yet more, with Ultimate, Heroes Reborn, Ultimate War Machine, Unleashed, Extremis with its Stealth variant, and the Epic Heroes Classic Armor. 
He even got a Transformer in 2005's Megamorph series. Then in 2008, everything changed with the introduction of the movie and its various figures. Suddenly the world knew who Iron Man was and the pendulum swung in the direction of children again. The first line of movie figures based on the first movie were in the same 6-inch scale as Marvel Legends, faithful and accurate. After this, Hasbro began pushing the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, and Iron Man 2 in 2010 had many, many more armor suits featured. This persisted with their Marvel Universe line in 2009 and the Avengers in 2012. In 2011, the Iron Man 2 line was rebranded as the Armored Avenger, and as well as the smaller scale figures, a line of 6 inch legend scale was also produced. Marvel Select from manufacturers Diamond Select were also rich in Iron Man deposits, including Ultimate, Extremis, and figures based on Iron Man 2's Mark IV and Mark VI armor, as well as War Machine, The Avengers, which is a re-release of the Mark VI, and there's also an Iron Man 3 Mark 42 on the way. These are in a larger and more detailed scale than Legends with accurate movie likenesses. In 2013, on the release of Iron Man 3, as well as releasing kid-centric smaller scale toys with missile launchers, Hasbro released an Ironmonger builder figure wave of Marvel Legends, purely based on these new movie designs, classic comic armors, and variants aimed at collectors. This dual channel approach strikes a great balance, keeps everyone happy, and doubtless makes Hasbro excellent revenue. So it's a practice that should be absolutely encouraged within this industry. And finally, Hot Toys have been producing luxury tie-in movie figures for the discerning and affluent collector, with renditions of every suit of armour and indeed Stark himself. They retail at prices north of £200 and are the absolute pinnacle of desirability, meticulously sculpted, often die-cast, loaded with accessories and featuring incredibly accurate likenesses. To conclude, Iron Man is a character that will be rendered in plastic as long as we have plastic, and then he will be rendered into whatever space-age mimetic poly-alloy we build figures out of in the distant future. He may not yet be as iconic as Spider-Man, but after only a few years of movie exposure, he's definitely giving Hulk and Wolverine a run for their money as Marvel's second most recognisable hero, and with an ever-growing list of suit variations, he will definitely remain their most versatile. Figures. Resource. Actionfigureresource.com.